so here we are the great hall here at st george's hall what a beautiful stunning place uh, and we're so lucky as well as steve bins very famous historian of the city <laughs> is with us steve how are you i'm well thank you so we're in your territory now steve this, we are this is you you love this place don't yes. you yes tell, tell me about your love and your, your history with this place this place is in my bones for i've studied it for a quarter of a century to try and understand its place in the beginnings and the moving of our town and city's great history. This mighty edifice which took 14 years to build begins at a time in the 1840s when there was 40% child mortality in this town and there were parts of it where you'd be very lucky to get to your 21st birthday. And 14 years later, it begins its, its history with performances of Handel's Messiah. The courts had already been open for three years and all of a sudden this great mighty place became a massive symbol of a town which wanted to be a city which had grown beyond its slave past and was even beginning the tortuous and difficult process of building a community in which people might actually wish to live. It's just beautiful and there's the back, the, the history that you've just told me and mm. what Alan told me outside was, mm. was a fact I didn't know about the number of bodies that are buried in the gardens outside. Mm. There so were, there, there's a lot of, obviously this is a beautiful place, but it, it's yes, kind of there was a from. there was a church and mm. there was a cemetery and it was a natural place for a building beyond the edge of the old town. What is massively important is where this place is. It's no accident of its nearness to the railway station, mm. which made a fundamental difference in the 19th century. This essentially, in its widest and properest sense, is an advertisement of the determination of of the of the people who built it of course it cost them more than it should have done it has functional difficulties for a start a floor that that they had to cover but just think about what they did by joining together the courts which are at each end of this mighty room and then this great hall they brought together the two opposites of the most diverse of ages the Victorian age where you could have great mighty functions in the evening some of the biggest outside of our capital city and yet at the daytime people would be facing the ordeal and of would prison that happen at the same time no it might finish by 5 p.m. or it might finish by 1 but p.m. The same day. but yes wow. yes and that was the point by joining these two rooms like this which must have been for an economic or some other convenience of the town council for a town council it still was then made this extraordinary joining of these two opposites and when Queen Victoria was brought in here in 1851 squeezing us in between babies as I always say when she said this was worthy of ancient Athens worthy of the Parthenon imagine what a boost that was to them to hear their place their town which had been involved in the slave trade there is no point in denying that of course it would be wrong to do so but imagine the Queen Her Majesty comparing their new building with buildings within the Queen of the ancient world Athens it was an extraordinary statement for her to have made and a kind of statement which Liverpool had to grow into and up to so, so after Queen Victoria's reign, what, what happened then? What was next for, for this place? Well, of course, there was the opening of this hall in 1854, then the concert room. And essentially, although this had been a concert hall, it was, its acoustics were not found easy for, for musicians, certainly for orchestral musicians. But again, one of these fascinating contradictions in Liverpool history is that although its acoustics were not particularly suitable to, your, to the orchestral musician, because classical concerts were so, well, I'm afraid quite elitist in those days, it actually brought more music to more people of our city than any of its concert halls, because practically it was cheaper and easier for them to get in here. This building was used by ordinary people from its very beginning. But you must also never underestimate its gathering power. Mm. This place is where people gathered in good times and bad. All of the greatness and all of the sadness of our city is encompassed by this plateau and indeed by this building. When Liverpool has drawn together 
uh, it has been the place where they have drawn. And indeed, it was also the scene of the great First World War events, reviews and so on. But it's also been the scene of nearly every demonstration mm. of, uh, within our city's history, left, right and centre. The Second World War, this, this was quite important for the Second World War. This was used for storage, am I right? Yeah, storage, ration card distribution. It was very serious, da seriously damaged, mm. but of course it, it had a massively iconic position. Obviously the waterfront buildings have an icon iconic uh, attachment because of their view from afar, because their view for the returning. But from a history point of view, this is really the most important building in Liverpool. Wow. Others are known because of, where, where, because of their view and what they were to the returning person. But this is of massive importance to the people who lived here. And it is a fascinating thought that even those people who have not been in it, unfortunately more people have been in it in recent years, even they, it is part of their culture. Uh, I, I was coming into town on the bus recently and a little child said to her mum, that's Buckingham Palace, mum. <laughs> and the, and the mum said, no, it's not, it's George's Hall. <laughs> now, she may not have had time to study the history of this building and neither has the child probably, but they do not know it. But in fact, of course, it is part of their culture. It is, and what a great way to end with you, Steve. Just, just really quickly, what is your favourite thing about St George's Hall? Have you got one thing I was that you once adore? asked by um, a person in the same industry as yourself, if I could see the building, where would I go? A fascinating question, because remember, I've never seen this building at all. There's a passage between here and the court. It's, it's a high, quite a, it's, it's, it's a few steps above here. But it's that idea that you can stand in one spot and view the full length of this hall and court one, those two extraordinary opposites which this building has drawn together. Mm. The great and extraordinary diversity of the Victorian world and a diversity and many of contradiction which makes the study of this city deeply fascinating to me and Brilliant. its people. Well listen, thank you for talking. You can your passion just shines through um, and I really appreciate your time. I'd rather my passion shine through than my bald patch. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Steve Finns, thanks for chatting to us. Pleasure.